Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I am Muhammad and today we're going to be discussing how we can actually integrate Elasticsearch and Kibana into our .NET 7 application. We're going to be seeing how we can actually configure Elasticsearch and Kibana locally in our environment. As well, we're going to be seeing how we can actually connect them to our uh, .NET application. And we're going to be seeing how we can actually propagate the logs from our .NET application and basically seeing them in Kibana. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe. It will really help the channel. As well, if you'd like to support me, please consider supporting me on Patreon or buying me a coffee. Now with that said, grab your cup of coffee and let's get started. We're going to start first by creating our web API. So inside our terminal, what we're going to do is we're going to put .NET, new web API, dash n, and we're going to call this sample API. Pretty straightforward. Just to take a few seconds. Perfect. Now I'm just going to navigate to sample API, and I'm going to open the Visual Studio code. So now that's open inside Visual Studio Code, I'm gonna basically go to my terminal, open a new terminal, and basically do .NET build. And now we can see application build successfully. And the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna install some NuGet packages. Actually, before we do that, let us just uh, initiate our ELK component. And basically what I wanna do here is I wanna have a full uh, Elastic uh, cluster available for me on my local machine, as well as Kibana. And in order for me to do that, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be creating a Docker Compose file in order for me to actually manage everything from a single file. And within the Docker Compose file, I'm gonna be basically connecting it to Docker Hub, getting the latest version of ELK, uh, basically as Elasticsearch and Kibana, and basically initialize them inside my machine so let's create this right now so inside my local directory here I'm gonna create a new file and I'm gonna call it docker-compose.yaml perfect and now we're gonna start first by specifying the version and we're gonna put version 3.1 and then I'm gonna specify the services and here we're gonna first by starting the elastic search services elastic search and then i'm gonna specify the container name and in this case it's gonna be els and then i'm gonna specify the image and basically if we want to find the image what we can do is we can actually go to docker hub and search for it and basically I have it already, but if you wanna if you wanna find uh, figure it out or basically find it, you can just go to Docker Hub and search for the image that you need from there and you'll be able to find it. So here all I'm gonna do is put docker dot elastic dot co forward slash elastic search forward slash Elastic search and which version 8.7.1 and here I forgot the H so let me just add this here perfect so now that I have specified my docker image I'm gonna specify the ports that I'm gonna be using and in this case it's gonna be port 9002 map to the 9002 and this is the default port that Elasticsearch is going to be utilizing and then once I do that then I specify the volumes and it's basically the volumes mean here is where I'm going to be storing my information so because by nature a docker uh, image or the docker container when it runs it is stateless and basically any information that is stored inside this volume it's going to be basically deleted or disappeared once the container stops what I want to do is I want a way where I can actually consistent the data inside my container and for that I need to utilize volume and volume allows me to basically create that so once I here uh, added the volumes I'm just gonna specify called elastic search dash data and here I'm just gonna specify the path so inside my USR share forward slash elastic search forward slash data perfect once we have done that, now I need to specify my environment variable. And the environment variable is going to be straightforward. So this is going to be two items that I need to specify. One regarding the security and one regarding the configuration. So regarding security, I'm going to put xpack dot security dot enabled. And I'm going to put false. 
because it's a local environment, I don't want to enable it right now. And the discovery dot type equals single node. And mean here basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to have a single node of our uh, uh, Elasticsearch registry, uh, sorry, Elasticsearch node running. And that way, just make it easy for us uh, while we are developing locally on our machine. So once we have added our environment, the last thing is I want to do is I want to add a network. So the network here is going to allow us to facilitate the communication between our Elasticsearch as well as Kibana. And here uh, we need to make sure that for both of these, what we need to do is we need to make sure that Elasticsearch and Kibana are actually on the same network. So they are able to communicate between each other because these two components will need to basically communicate in order for us to basically process the logs that, Kibana, that Elasticsearch is going to have. And Kibana is going to take these logs and basically display it for us. And the way we're going to be doing that is by having them both on the same network inside this uh, Docker Compose file. That way it's going to abridge network and they will be able to see each other and see the ports and they will be able to communicate. So now all I'm going to do is just create a network. I'm going to call it Elastic. Perfect. Now that I have specified my first service. So if you can see here, the first service is going to be Elastic. The second service that I'm going to be actually providing is going to be right now Kibana. And Kibana also is going to be pretty straightforward. So the first thing that I want to add is the container name and it's going to be called Kibana. Then I want to basically specify the image and here the image is going to be docker.elastic.co forward slash Kibana forward slash Kibana. Again, I'm going to get the same version number which is going to be 8.7.1. And then once I do that, I'm going to specify the ports for Kibana. And the ports for Kibana is going to be 5601, map to 5601. And then the next step is going to say, this is really important, depends on. And here the depends on means that we're doing is we're actually linking those two together. We're linking the actual container or basically elastic as well as Kibana. And once we link them all together and have them uh, dependent, which means that the elastic container needs to run first, the elastic container needs to be fully running, and then Kibana will be able to actually run and execute all of the configuration it's needed in order for it to, basic, to, be, to be able to communicate with Elasticsearch. Because if we have Kibana set up first and it's all running and uh, Elasticsearch is not, when it's trying to initialize the configuration and the connection and it fails, it will not restart itself unless we stop it and restart it. So that's why what we need to do is we need to specify the dependency to make sure that the Docker Compose file will make sure the, the, the uh, Elasticsearch is fully running and then it will start initiating Kibana and do all of the required uh, configuration. So once we have done that, all I'm going to specify here the Elastic uh, Search service. And basically this depends on here is going to be the name that we currently have here on top next to services. And that's mean we're chain linking the services together. And then once we specify the depends on now it's been specified the environment variable. And the environment variable is going to be the elastic search underscore URL. And here basically we're going to allow it to go and connect to this. Uh, URL on port 9002. So here all we need to do is put HTTP forward slash forward slash localhost on port 9002. Uh, sorry, 9200. And then lastly, I want to specify the network. And in this case, the network is going to be elastic. Perfect. So once we have done that, the last two items I need to add here is going to be nine networks. And the networks, it's going to be my elastic network. And I'm going to specify the driver for this network. I mean here what is going to be the network type. And for this, we're just going to make it a simple bridge network. And lastly, we're going to specify the volumes that I'm utilizing for my elastic search. And here, all I'm going to put is going to be the elastic search dash data. And that's it. 
So let's do a quick summary of what we have done so far. What we did is we basically created our Elasticsearch. We configured here the container name, the image, the ports, the volumes, and the environment variable. Once we have done all of that, we basically went to Kibana, specified all of the required information, and then we specified the networks and the volumes. So now, if I want to build this up, uh, let me just do that in a different terminal so I can do it directly from here. Let me clear this. And in order for you to be able to execute this, what, I, what we need to do is we need to make sure that we have Docker running inside our machine and basically uh, we have it all fully configured. So inside, uh, once you go to Docker Hub and download it, uh, you should be able to see that you have this whale icon on top. And basically once you open it, let me just put this here, you'll be able to see that you're gonna have something like this and you need to make sure that you have the uh, whale icon here green. It means that Docker is running as it should be. So now if I want to just build this, all I'm going to put here is docker dash compose and up. And now we can see what's happening is we are pulling Kibana and Elasticsearch from Docker Hub. It's going to be downloaded into our machine. And once it's downloaded into our machine, it's going to start to configure itself. So this is going to take a couple of minutes to do so. So once it's up and ready and it's finished, we're going to be resuming. A few moments later. Okay, perfect. So now that it's running, let us see what happened here, which is really important. So if I go all the way up, all the way up, all the way up, we can see here that our Kibana and Elasticsearch has been pulled successfully. They, okay. Let's go back up. Okay, it disappeared. Okay, this is gonna take a few, because it's directly start populating the logs. But basically what happens is attach Elasticsearch and Kibana together and make sure that both of the instances are available before they can actually do the work. And now what we can do here is we can see that Kibana is actually running and Elasticsearch, if we go all the way up, we can see that Elastic, which is ELS, is actually also running. So now in order for us to verify this, let me open my web browser. And inside my web browser, what I did is I visited that uh, two uh, URLs. The first one here is going to be localhost port 9000. And we can see here that my Elasticsearch cluster is actually running as it should be. We can see that it's running on the version that I have specified, 8.7.1. And we can see that the build type is Docker and we can see all of this information that we need. Now, if I go back to my index inside Elastic, we can see that Elastic is actually, uh, Kibana is actually running and it's actually connected to Elasticsearch. So now that I have all of this set up and basically I have all of this information ready, the next step is I need to install some packages inside my web API that I've created. So now let's go back to Visual Studio Code and inside my terminal here, I'm just going to be basically adding some packages. So the first package that I want to add, it's going to be .NET. See how it looks. Okay, .NET. Let's clear this up so it looks a bit better. Okay, so now let's .NET add package and here we're just going to add serilog dot asp not core so that's going to be the first one and serilog basically it's going to override the different the uh, default uh, logging system that exists within dot not core then we're going to put dot not add package serilog dot enrichers dot environment And this will allow us to basically have more logging enrichments. Again, .NET add package serilog dot syncs dot console. And basically, uh, the things mean here inside this, it means that because serilogs can basically output logs to different modules. So in order for us to do that, and Serilog refers to these modules as things. So it could be like a Kibana, it could be the, uh, the console, it could be anything that we want. So that's why we need to add these things. And then we're gonna add the debug so we'll be able to see those debug information. So again, .NET add package, Serilog dot things.debug and that's for debugging purposes we'll be able to get it and then we're going to put dot .NET add packages now we want for serilog for uh, elastic search so serilog dot sinks dot elastic search oops serilog 
add package, package, not packages. Okay, perfect. And the last one is going to be dot .NET add package serilog dot exception. Perfect. So now once that is done, if I want to verify them that it's running, all I need to do is go to my weatherforecast.cs, sorry, to my uh, sample api.cs proj, and I'm able to see everything that I need there. Perfect. So now that that's done, the next step is I need to update my program.cs and I need to update my app settings in order for me to take full advantage of Serilog as well as uh, the logging mechanism that exists. So, so now the first step, uh, what I want to do is I want to actually go to app settings and basically add all of the configuration that's needed for Elasticsearch and Kibana. And this configuration basically going to be the ports that uh, Elasticsearch is running on. So my application will be able to find where Elasticsearch is running. And the second item that I need to add here is the configuration for cell log on the, and the level of details that I want to have inside my uh, application. So inside my uh, app settings, and let's remove this. Mm, yeah, let's remove this. And let's leave it for now, then we can remove it later. And the first thing that I want to add here is Serilog. And then here we're going to put the uh, minimum level of uh, information that I want to record. So minimum level. And this is going to be another JSON object. Specify the default. And here we're going to add information and then specify the override and it's going to be Microsoft and I'm going to add information as well and I'm going to add also system and I'm going to add the warnings. And then once that is added, the next item that I need to add is the Elasticsearch configuration. And here, it's going to be as simple as just adding the URI that I need. And this URI is going to be HTTP forward slash forward slash localhost on port. 9200 and let me add a comma here perfect now let me just do a dot .NET build excellent so now that my application is running and it's building the next step for me is i need to go to my program.cs and I need to update it. And inside my program.cs here, what I need to do is I need to add all of the information that's going to be injected inside the startup of my application. So the locking mechanism will be able to be overridden as well in order for Elasticsearch to be configured correctly. So all of these logs that's being collected will be sent directly to Elasticsearch. So let's see how, how we can do that. So the first thing that we need to do is basically right now we want to create a function and it's going to be responsible for configuring the logging inside our program.cs. So let's see how we can do that. So we go all the way down and here we're going to be doing is we're going to create a new function and this function we're going to call it a configure logging straight to the point and we're just going to make it void and we're going to say configure logging simple as that and once we do that now we need to actually add to it what do we want to implement inside so first of all I want to specify the environment that I want to get so I'm going to call it environment equal environment dot get environment variable and I'm gonna get my ASP.NET core environment Let's see how it's looking ASP.NET core underscore environment perfect so now that I got my environment the next step is I need to actually start configuring my logger so var configuration equal new configuration builder and then inside my configuration builder I want to add some JSON so first of all add JSON file and this JSON file is going to be the app settings dot JSON 
and we're gonna be basically pass the optional and I'm gonna say it's gonna be false and then I'm gonna make sure it's reload on change equal to true so that's really important and then I'm gonna put dot add JSON file and this one here is gonna allow us to add JSON file per uh, environment so I'm gonna put app settings dot actually I can just put environment here yep and as we did before it's gonna be optional oops optional is gonna be equal to false perfect so now that we have done that the next step is we're gonna we want to start actually building the actual logger so let's add a semicolon and then we can start configuring our logger and we're gonna put log oops oops we're gonna put log dot logger equal new logger configuration configuration and then here we're gonna basically fix those references so we can actually see the autocomplete so as you can see we added serilog and then here let's see what does it need okay that should be fine and then we're gonna start first by enriching dot from log context so that's the first item then we're gonna put enrich with exception exceptions details and then we're gonna be basically let's fix this reference perfect and then we need to basically now add the right to dot debug so we can actually see it and then I'm gonna write to console so we can actually see it in the console then we're gonna put write to Elasticsearch and this is gonna be the main thing that we need and we're gonna pass the configuration actually I think it's configure elastic elastic search see if it's up here here maybe let's add it manually configure elastic sync and then here we're gonna pass the configuration that we got and we want to pass the environment and let's fix this references so here it's gonna ask us to add this so right to elastic search let's continue on this and then we'll fig figure it out and then I'm gonna say enrich dot uh, with properties and then here is gonna be the environment Uh, it's gonna be environment and then we're gonna put dot read from dot configuration and here it's gonna be the configuration and lastly we're gonna put create logger and close it off so this one we need to fix this needs to be a capital C and let's see why is this is not happy with it. So let's check here maybe inside the if we have the seri log installed successfully. Okay, well that's why it did not install the uh, package successfully. So let's try install the package again. Because basically here what we need to do is we need to have Elasticsearch. So let me just copy this. Actually, uh, let's look for it. So I can just put uh, .NET add package and it's going to be serilog dot syncs dot elastic search let's see perfect now we can see it has added it and now if I go back here and I go all the way down perfect and now we should add the reference okay so this is still not happy with it configure elastic 
sync does not exist. Now I need to create this configure elastic sync mechanism so it will be able to actually uh, update the uh, elastic search. So after this method here, configure logging, and I'm, I'm gonna add this method here. So let's add it and after that. And this one is gonna be straightforward. And within this method, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be creating the configuration that we're gonna be needing in order for Elasticsearch to work. So what we did right now is we were actually uh, configuring the logger first. And basically we told Serilog how it's gonna actually grab the logging information. And once it's grabbed the logging information, how it's gonna actually propagate it within the system. Now what we wanna do is we wanna pass the configuration for Elasticsearch and those in configuration for Elasticsearch, they're gonna feed into the logger and then from there, it's gonna feed into the ASP.NET uh, application and that way we're gonna have a full cycle of the configuration. So let's see how we can do that. So if we come back here, now all we're gonna put is elastic search sync option. I think it's gonna be elastic search sync option. And then we're gonna say configure, similar to the name of this. So let's just copy paste this, it's easier. And then here I'm gonna pass the I configuration I'm gonna call it configuration, I configuration root. I'm gonna call it configuration. And then it's gonna ask us for a string, which is gonna be our environment. Once I do that, now I need to actually propagate this uh, with the information that's needed. So I'm gonna put return, new, nope, new elastic, search sync option and uh, it's gonna require us to add those references why it's not happy with it so now i think what the issue here is we need to put an us let's see if that's gonna help us find the correct yes that it is and let's add the us here as well perfect and now let us start with the configuration for it and we're gonna say basically force we're gonna put a new we're gonna add, add a new uri and we're then gonna pass the configuration or basically we're gonna pass the URL for our elastic search from our configuration. And here we're gonna put configuration and we're gonna pass the elastic. So we can see it directly from here, elastic configuration. And we're gonna put URI, perfect. So once we have configured the configuration, next we need to initialize this. And let's put this like this. And some of the information that we want to pass inside here. So the first thing is going to be the uh, auto register template. And I'm going to be equal to true. And that way it's going to automatically register the uh, Elasticsearch and the index that we currently have inside the uh, Elasticsearch uh, service that's running. Then we're going to be creating our index format. And the index format, in essence, it can take any form that you want. We can give it any naming convention, but it's really a good idea to actually give it something that's going to be easy for us to find within the actual logs. Because if we're utilizing our Elasticsearch service to actually log multiple applications, we want to, a way to figure out which log coming from which application and for which environment of that application. So we want to do the separation of concerns within our logs. So it's really good to give it an actually our index, a really good naming convention that we can actually refer to. So. The way we're going to be doing is we're going to utilize reflection and inside this reflection we're going to be basically getting the name of our library which is running our, our the DLL which is running our application. And to do that it's going to be straightforward. We're going to be basically just put assembly. Let's make it as a dollar sign so we can use thing interpolation assembly dot get execution execution assembly. And uh, let's fix this reference. Perfect, we're using reflection. And then once we do that, we're gonna put dot, is this gonna be valid? Get execution assembly, yes, that's correct. Then I'm gonna put get name. And then I'm gonna put dot name. I'm gonna put dot to lower. So that means that we're gonna get it in lowercase. 
And then once we've done all of that, we want to do is I want to replace every single dot, maybe because my uh, application name could be compromised of, for example, uh, sample application dot sample app dot API, for example. Another one could be sample app dot uh, DL uh, dot, uh, for example, data service sample app dot email. We don't want the dot. We want to have instead of the dot a dash, it will make it easier. So all I'm going to be doing here is just instead uh, after dot to lower, I'm going to put replace. And inside my replace, I'm just going to say, please replace the dot with the dash. So that's going to be the main thing. And after uh, we specify what do we want to replace, let's go back here. I'm not sure why it went like this. Okay. After we specify that, uh, I need to actually give it the environment name, which is running on. And for this, all I'm going to be doing is, uh, let's see how this is looking so far. So this is the assembly. Okay. Let's put it in this way. And then I'm going to put dash and then I'm going to put environment dot to lower again, everything's going to be dot to lower. And then the nice thing, uh, the last thing that I want to add is I'm going to add the date format and the date format here is going to allow me to actually know when is this application going to, uh, when is this uh, index has been created and because it's going to be attached to it. Because for example, if the application crash and uh, it's going to be running again, so it's going to have a new index uh, created for it, or basically it's going to append to the current index and it's really good to add the date format for it. So it's going to be like date now, dot year and the month. So let's add this right now. So here, all I'm going to be doing after this is going to be as simple as adding date time dot now. And this will give us the actual current time of now. Actually, let's make it UTC since uh, we're not, we don't really care about the actual times. So and then I'm going to put oh, it's going to be YYY dash MMM. And that's going to be uh, going to give us the year as well as the month. So once we have configured this index, there's a couple of extra items that we can actually add. And this couple of extra item, it could be uh, extra configuration that we're going to be needing in order for us to manage our uh, uh, Elasticsearch cluster. Uh, it's not something really important. We're not going to delve into what they mean right now. But for example, uh, we're just going to give a quick high overview of what they are. So the first one is going to be the replica. So I'm going to put number. Uh, let's add first a comma. So make sure it's finished. And then we're going to put here number of replicas. I'm going to put it's going to be two replica. And then I'm going to put the number of shards as well equal to two. Actually, let's put a replica equal to one. So now that we have added this, the next item is uh, all I'm going to be doing is in order for me to inject this inside my service, I'm going to copy this. And all I'm going to put it is, is before the uh, builder. I'm going to add the configuration. And once I added the configuration, all I need to do is just enable Seri log through our services. So I need to utilize the builder dot uh, services. So builder dot host dot use Seri log, and that's it. Now with these two, basically this one I added all of my configuration that I need, and this one here I'm just enabled Seri log inside my service structure. So inside my DI container, Seri log will be automatically available for me. So now you can see there's one error. Let's see what's the error. And we can see here that the configuration uh, is not working. So let's see why. Oh yeah, so first two things. So this needs to be true. And here we need to add a dot build at the end. And now this should be, yes, perfect. Now let's fix our problem. Now let's do a dot not build to make sure everything is building as it should be. So dot not build and we can see it built succeeded. Now, all I'm going to do to test this right now, I'm just going to go to my weather logging here and inside my get response, I'm just going to add a simple logger. I'm going to put logger dot log information. And I'm just going to say hello from action. And let's run this application. So dot not run. And we can see it's run. Oops, we had an issue. Let's fix it. Uh, what's the issue? File not found. Configuration app settings to JSON. So maybe I misspelled that. Let's see it. App settings. I forgot the S. So now let's run this again. So now let us run our application, generate some logs, and start seeing them in Kibana pulled from Elasticsearch. So. 
inside our uh, Visual Studio Code, I'm just gonna put .NET Run. And now we can see it's building, and now it's running. I'm gonna go back to my web browser. And inside my web browser here, all I'm gonna do is just execute a few times. And now if I come back here and look up, we can see that my message, or basically my log is actually popping up correctly. We can see hello from action. And basically now if, what I need to do is I need to go back to my web browser and inside my elastic search here if i want to see my index so first of all if you take a look here at the ports that we are visiting we can see that i'm visiting uh, localhost on 5601 and this port is basically what we have configured inside my docker compose file so you can see here inside my docker compose file on the ports we can see that i have 5061 port into the kibana so that's exactly what we're seeing and if i just refresh here on this one we can see here that my Elasticsearch is running on port 9002, which is exactly what I want. So if I wanna see the index that I currently have, which is the one that the application has generated when it uh, when it ran, and basically it was able to configure itself with that. So here, if I, I click on the menu on the left-hand side, I go all the way down, we can see that we have stack management, and inside stack management, if basically uh, under data, we can click on index management, and through this, I can see that I have some sample data development, and basically sample API is the name of my application DLL, and then the environment and the date of this. And here we can see that I have a couple of information which are available. So first of all, we can see the status is open, which means it's accepting logs. We have the primaries and the replicas. So now if I go back to my Visual Studio Code and I go to my program.cs, we can see here that I have specified the number of replicas to equal to one when I configured it. We can see it's equal to one and the number of shards is equal to two, which is gonna be my primary, perfect. And now, because I was testing this a bit, we can see that I have a bit of logs which is populated here. So right now, how, how can I see these logs? So all I can, what I can do is I can click back on the Elastic icon and under the menu, I can just click under Analytics on Discover and this is a menu uh, page that I created before where I can see all of my different loggings. So what I want to do right now is I want to show you how you can actually create your own um, logs. So and basically view of these logs. So under the uh, view here, so you should see sample or something around that. So what I want you to do is just click on this small icon here, a small uh, arrow here and click on create data view. And inside this data view, you can give it whatever name that you want. I'm just going to give it uh, a view for gonna make it capital S and then here you're gonna see an index pattern so let's copy whatever index currently exists I'm just put it here and what I want to do right now is I just want to remove everything after the dash and put a wildcard so why did I put a wildcard after that because basically what I want to do here is I want to catch all of the logs which is coming out of my application no matter where I am using it so in this example here what I'm doing is I'm using my application inside a development environment on my locker machine but what happened if this environment is basically now oh, sorry if I'm testing this application on a different environment in production in pre-prod in uh, a sandbox environment I want to also capture the logs there by having this wildcard here it only it only gonna allow me to actually capture everything and it's allow me to filter the request which is coming in based on the different environment so i'm not limiting myself to the date and the environment that i have added to my dll what i'm doing here is i'm actually capturing everything and then through the search bar i can actually filter to basically what i need and this is the power of kibana i can um, create wildcards to match whatever logs that i want coming out of my application so right now inside this what i want to do here is i'm gonna keep it like this i'm gonna keep save data with data view and once I do all of that, we can see it automatically started populating all of the different uh, views that currently exist. So what I want to do right now, I just want to make this a bit further. So I started this video yesterday at 5 a.m. Let's say, and I want to keep it for today until, let's make it end of day. So let's say 10 p.m. So I click on update. And now we can see that you have, uh, we have 584 hits and basically what I see I can see the different logs that has been collected throughout the day from yesterday and you can see here like basically the number of records count we can see here that uh, based on the different times what I, uh, the different information and if I click on one of these messages which is popping up here and I can click on these two uh, arrows what I can see here is I can see the different uh, information which is provided and being captured so I can see here that the unique ID which has came with this request I can see which index does it exist in I can see the timestamp which has been generated in. I can see the 
uh, what was the endpoint that we had pulled and what was the response that has been generated. As well, I can see the messages which has been propagated, so on and so forth. I can see all of this information. I can even see the unique action that has been utilized. So all of this information we can see is directly coming out just by actually injecting uh, in, and configuring Elasticsearch inside our application and basically making sure that Elasticsearch and Kibana are working together through the document compose file. So what I want to do right now is I want to basically create an error or throw basically an exception and see how that is basically displayed inside my Kibana. So back to my Visual Studio code. All I want to do here right now inside my weather forecast, I'm just going to create a simple, first let me stop my application from running. I'm going to create a simple try catch. And I'm going to say here throw new exception. And I'm going to say here error in the application. Yeah, something around this line. And inside my catch, I'm going to catch the exception. And all I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to put logger dot log error. And then here I'm just going to pass the message that I want. So I'm going to say something went wrong. And we can see here there's different ways that I can actually populate this. So I can pass the parameters. I can pass different items to um, make this work the way that I want. So what I want to do here first is I want to pass my exception. Then I want to pass a message. And then if there's any parameters that I have, currently I don't have, but let's say we are getting something interesting. So I'm just going to put to one or let's say any random number as parameters. I'm just going to order a name or anything. So I'm just going to put five as a parameter. So now that I have that, I'm just going to run my application again. So I'm going to put dot net run. And now my application is building and we can see it's running. So first things first, I want to go back to my web browser inside Swagger. I'm just going to execute this once. And if we come back here and look up, we can see here that we have an error generated and uh, something went wrong. We can see the actual exception that has been generated, which is great. So now what I want to do as, as well, we can see the hello from action, the logging that we have added previously. So now what I want to do is inside my discover elastic search, let's stop this and let's just refresh. We can see right now that uh, the number of errors has basically uh, went up because we have, uh, sorry, number of logging has went up and we can see now that the red line that I had it now, it's become a bit more thicker because I have more exceptions. Again, there was a red line before because I tested it before. So uh, once we have all of that, now let's see how we can actually search for the errors. So inside here, for example, I put something one throw or error in the application. So let's take error in the application, for example, and let me put it here and let's search for it. And now we can see here that the application, we can see this message has been filtered, error in the application. We can see the time of the, error, the exception. So if I click on these two arrows again, we can see a lot of different items. So first of all, again, similar to the log, we can see in the unique ID and the index. But the nice thing about this is we can see the actual exception stack. And this exception stack that we can see here will actually allow us to see what was going on inside our application and potentially what went wrong in it so in order for us to solve it and this is going to be a, a key role into debugging our application and figuring it out and basically try to solve the problem because within the exception stack we're able to actually see the exact information with and of what was going on so now inside here i can if i scroll a bit down we can see the action id the action name that has been called the development environment as well the message that i have populated and we can see the level of uh, what happened so we can see here that the level is uh, error as well as the message something went wrong and this something went wrong we have basically added it here if you within the logger and then we can see all of this information that we have populated available directly to us within the kibana 
a dashboard and there's a lot of more items of how we can actually uh, utilize this but this is a very high level overview about Kibana as well as Elasticsearch and how they work together with .NET in order for us to capture all of these different logs and in order for us to capture all of these different information so we can see here the power that Kibana and Elasticsearch provide to when it comes to logging and uh, working along with Serilog and uh, this was a very high level overview if you'd like me to jump more into for example the a language is that uh, Kibana utilize, which is going to be KQL or for example, a different uh, utilization that Kibana provide. Like, please mention in the comments down below and I will create a video around that. As well, if you'd like to jump more about Elasticsearch within .NET 7, also please let me know and I'll make sure to cover this point. I hope this video was helpful. Please like, share and subscribe if you find it helpful. It will really help the channel. And let us do a quick overview of what we have covered today. So in today's session, what we have done is we have basically configured Kibana and Elasticsearch locally on our machine utilizing using Docker Compose. We were basically able to connect them together using the Docker Compose file and make them run locally. Once we have done that, we basically then create our .NET application. We configured Serilog there. We added some enrichment to it so we can actually see what was happening. As well, we configured the Serilog, uh, sorry, the Elasticsearch and Kibana directly into our application and we were able to propagate all of the logging that's happening inside our application to Serilog and Kibana. And from there we went into Kibana and we were able to see all of the information which is all of the logs which is coming out of our application. Then we created an exception and we were able to see that exception as well inside Kibana. Again, I hope this video was helpful. Please like, share and subscribe. It really helps the channel and have a great day.